Hello to all and welcome back to War Thunder Aviation. I'm Brother Templar and on today's episode of Which is Better, we will be comparing the Messerschmitt 2621A versus the Gloucester Meteor Mark III. Two aircraft that although never actually saw combat against one another, it is true to say that these two aircraft saw production and indeed started to see combat with their respective factions at about the same time, meaning that these two aircraft are perfect for comparison against each other to see who has the better aircraft once and for all. Or at least in the realms of War Thunder, which I'm sure you're all aware by this point is pretty unhistorically accurate, but you know, it's good enough, I suppose. Now, as per usual, this was chosen by the people on Twitter, so if you do want a chance of seeing what comes up next on which is better, then once again, that is the best place to go and vote the next time a poll does come out. So then, at this current point in time in War Thunder, the Messerschmitt 262 and Gloucester Meteor Mark III are both rank 5 battle rating 7.0 aircraft. Which doesn't sound too surprising when you put into consideration that these are both aircraft that saw combat at almost the exact same time in real life, but despite these similarities, they are in fact, on paper, very different aircraft, and indeed both of them have very different abilities, strengths, and weaknesses to each other. So with all that being said, let's get into this video and truly see once and for all who is the better aircraft. So the first advantage with the Messerschmitt 262 over the Gloucester Meteor is that of its speed, as with a top speed of a very impressive 542 miles an hour, it is certainly one of the fastest jets you're going to find at a 7.0 battle rating, and is, well, very much faster than a Gloucester Meteor. Another pretty strong advantage of the 262 is that of its armament, or at least a part of its armament, as the 262 comes with four 30mm Mark 108 cannons, which, in comparison to the Gloucester Meteor's two 20mm cannons, it means that when the 262 hits an enemy, it hits very, very hard. Or at least to War Thunder standards, I mean, as I said in my last video, the 262 is actually underperforming with its quad 30mm cannons in this game, but either way, it still hits very hard by this game's standards. The third advantage of the Messerschmitt 262 is its durability as this is probably down to the fact that the aircraft was designed with intercepting enemy bombers in mind, and indeed spent most of its time in the Second World War doing just that. Thus, it means that you're going to need an aircraft that has a lot of armour, and something that can take a lot of hits and keep flying, which is fortunately something that the 262 can very well do. In fact, this aircraft is not only far more durable than the Gloucester Meteor, but in fact, it's not just in combat that this is a durable and strong, sturdy, well-put-together sort of aircraft, but also when it comes to high-speed manoeuvres, as in fact, the 262 has a structural failure G-limit of 10.4 positive Gs and 4.7 negative Gs, which is fairly quick um, for pretty much any aircraft standards, but is very good in comparison to the Gloucester Meteor's 5, or sorry, 9.5 positive G limit and the 4.5 negative G limits. Now, this may not sound too impressive on paper, as it's only realistically one more positive G better, but I would like you to keep in mind that the Gloucester Meteor Mark III is a much more manoeuvrable aircraft, and at high speeds 
when it turns, it turns a lot quicker, which of course is one of its advantages and something I will get on to later in this video, but do keep in mind, however, that when you're turning quickly at high speeds, then your wings do have a tendency of flying off very quickly in many different directions. So yes, I certainly would say that the 262 almost never breaks off its wings in uh, high speed manoeuvres, but when it comes to the Gloucester Meteor, it does have a tendency of doing just that. The fourth and final advantage of the Messerschmitt 262 is the fact that it is allowed to have a secondary armament. In this case, you can choose between two options of either 24 55mm uh, 3.85kg rockets or 48 55mm 3.85kg rockets. And it is true that in both cases, these are very small rockets, so if you're intending on trying to hit ground forces with them, you really want to hit the vehicles dead on to do anything to them. But these rockets are, although small, very effective against enemy aircraft. And in fact, if you're intending on going bomber hunting in your 262, then adding a few rockets under your wings is actually a pretty well-advised thing to do. And with all that said, it's time to have a look at our second competitor for today, this being the Gloucester Meteor Mark III. Now, the first major advantage the Gloucester Meteor Mark III has over the Messerschmitt 262 is its manoeuvrability. As, in fact, the Gloucester Meteor Mark III is one of the most manoeuvrable jets in the game. As, coming in with only a 20 second turn time, with 100% engine performance at 1000 meters altitude and flaps up, it is, well, pretty good. In fact, it will be capable of turning with most propeller-driven aircraft you will come up against at this battle rating. Although, that being said, we really need to look at how good it is in comparison to the 262, and, well, yeah, it's a lot better than the 262. As, in fact, under the same scenario, the 262 has a max turn time of only 29 seconds, which is very slow for a jet fighter, and, in fact, it's more of the sort of realms you'd be expecting from heavy fighters to, in fact, maybe light to medium bombers. So, yes, it's certainly one of the least maneuverable aircraft you will be coming up against at this battle rating, uh, for sure. The second major advantage of the Gloucester Meteor Mark III is the fact of its armament. As although we've already established that the 262 has larger weapons than the uh, Gloucester Meteor, meaning that it hits harder and in fact has overall more burst mass, it also does have its disadvantages for this. As the Gloucester Meteor Mark III has four 20mm Mark V Hispano cannons. Now, of course, it goes without saying that having four 20mm Hispano cannons is pretty good for just about any battle rating at this game, although, of course, isn't as much as the 262. But what it does have over the 262, and indeed the Mark 108 cannons in general, is the ability to have more ammunition for the same weight, as you're firing smaller projectiles, meaning that, of course, you can carry more on board. But also, and probably most importantly of all, is the fact that these shells have much higher velocity than the Mark 108s. In fact, the Mark 108 cannons, once again, as I said in my last video, are very, very slow. In fact, they are one of the slowest cannons you can actually get on this game, with a maximum speed of only 510 meters per second, 
which by canon standards and indeed by any armaments standards of the 20th century is very, very slow. And indeed, the Gloucester Meteor's Hispano Mark V cannons are amongst those that are faster, as with a muzzle velocity of around 840 to 880 meters per second, well, it does somewhat go without saying that it requires a lot less lead on your shots and allows you to be quite a bit more accurate when it comes to using your Mark V Hispanos over the Mark 108 cannons. The third major advantage, or more advantages, of the Gloucester Meteor is its speed control, as this aircraft is not only very fast in acceleration, partially due to the fact that when you whack this thing up to 109% power, it actually is capable, or more to the point, its engines are capable of outperforming that of the 262s which means that it can, in fact, accelerate a lot quicker. Not only this, but also it's a lot lighter aircraft, which also gives it a lot faster acceleration. And it also means that it actually has a lot lower stall speed as well. So all of this means that it's a absolute joy to fly of an aircraft and not to mention the fact that it even comes with air brakes, and pretty good ones at that. So it means that this is one of those aircraft that is very forgiving when it comes to your speed, and unlike the 262, where once you've got it started, it's difficult to stop it again, the Gloucester Meteor Mark III will go from 0 to 100, back to 0 again, and just do it in absolutely no time at all, thanks to all of its uh, good control services, but also its powerful engines and its light nature. And so, with all that said, it's time to finally get around to answering the question of which is better. And well, I must admit, when I was coming into this video from my experiences of flying jet aircraft when I first got them many months ago, I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm just going to really obviously just going to choose the 262. I mean, it's faster, it gets secondary armament, its burst mass is insane, you know, easily one of the best in the game, you know, and it's a tank, and it's just better in every way. Oh, you know, how how could I ever say anything else? But to be honest with you, after reflying both of these aircraft, I'm really not so sure anymore, and in fact, I've actually found myself doing better in the Meteor than I have in the 262, which is really strange and I did not expect at all. So to be honest with you, I couldn't tell you with a straight face that either one of these aircraft are better than the other. So in fact, for the sake of this video, I will have to say that this is a draw, and in fact, both of these aircraft are pretty good at a 7.0 battle rating, and, well, that's all there really is to it. Although that being said, I don't think these two aircraft are particularly identical, or even really that similar. And as I've already said, as long as you state your advantages of your in particular aircraft, then you'll find yourself doing very well in both of these. And in fact, I found from my experience, the 262 comes as the best interceptor of these two. I mean, the 262's 30mm are underperforming to real-life standards, but even so, they're still very powerful and will happily chew up any bombers they come up against. But that being said, I would say that the Meteor was a far better dogfighter thanks to its better maneuverability, acceleration, speed control in general, and also its four very accurate and good velocity uh, Hispano cannons. It comes out as the best in that category. But even then, that's not to say they only work well in those two categories as either a fighter or an interceptor, because once again, you'll see in many of these videos and in 
many of my uh, games playing in both of these aircraft, I have performed both roles quite happily, and as long as you know your strengths and weaknesses of the aircraft, then, as I've already said, you'll do well in it. It's hard not to, to be honest with you, as both of these aircraft are, well, pretty good. Although, that being said, I would want to give one final warning to anyone wanting to use either of these aircraft, which is, um, regarding the 262, yes, the velocity of your shots are really, really slow, and yes, they're really annoying to use, um, so it will take you a good few games to get used to its low velocity, and if you then come off that aircraft and then go back onto it again sometime later, you'll often, um, be leading nowhere near far as, um, as you need to, and that's perfectly acceptable. Trust me, everyone gets angry with the Mark 108 cannons the first time they use them, and even when you have used them a lot and you're used to them, you still get a bit annoyed at their low velocity, but for what it's worth, you can get them to work, you just have to be patient. And, uh, regarding the Meteor, there is an easy and very simple mistake that a lot of people do, and I will admit that I did this when I first flew this aircraft a lot, and it made me um, perform way worse in the Meteor, and that is I chose the 20 minute fuel rather than the 9 minute. And I did that because you look at the 9 minute minimum fuel load and you're like, that's not long enough, by the time I get out there and start intercepting enemies and that, I'll be low on fuel and have to come back already. You know, what's what's the point, sort of thing. Um, so I always went for the 20 minutes because I knew I'd stay in the air longer. Don't, okay? For the love of God, don't. It makes your aircraft so sluggish and bad, it makes it feel like you're flying a completely different aircraft, okay? So yes, having only 9 minutes of fuel is annoying and you will find yourself having to get back to base um, fairly commonly, but trust me, it's worth that slight um, issue rather than flying with 20 minutes of fuel and just being crap in a dogfight and crap in acceleration and just, you know, it just being a real pain to fly this aircraft. And, well, with all that said and done, I'd like to say that I thank you all very much for watching. If you did like, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, that's always appreciated. And do stick around in my Twitter if you want to have a good chance of seeing what comes next in my um, Which Is Better series, or indeed choosing on what videos I do uh, in the future. I mean, I've got many, many different games I can play, and I intend on playing some of them at some point. So yeah, if you want a chance to vote or what have you, or just have a bit of a chat with me, then I'm always online on my Twitter. And if you do want to give me any money to contribute towards my work, then I would be more than happy to accept any th um, any amount of money on my Patreon. Um, and yeah, all money is greatly appreciated. I'm currently unemployed at this point in time, and I would love to do this as a full-time job. You know, and also I'd like to buy a lot better equipment than what I currently have. So yeah, any uh, money I raise on Patreon will of course go into the channel. And that's about it. So yeah, uh, once again I thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, I say thank you very much, and I'll see you then.